Hi, this is Sabi. I'm sitting over here at beautiful Scottsdale inside of Sewing Nuts. And today, my very first video with you, I want to first start talking about some of the beautiful fabrics that we have inside the shop. And not only how beautiful they are, but we're going to pick one of them today and we'll move forward and we're going to make a project. I think you're going to like this. So the very first thing I'd like to bring out, and these just came in, I absolutely love them. This is Whale's Tails. Whale's Tails comes in, looks like I've got seven different fabrics in the series. So the first one here is the Whale's. It's got a matching beautiful, it almost works like a solid for you. The actual whale's tail here, whale's tail, some beautiful seahorse, love this one, octopus, this is beautiful, and two different colors, same theme, it looks like it's almost like a silver dollar fish, absolutely beautiful. I'm thinking on this one since I am in the process of trying to remodel my bathroom. This might be an absolutely beautiful series of fabrics to put inside the bathroom. So we'll set that aside because on a different theme, I absolutely love this one also. These in through here transition from one side to the next. Beautiful. I think maybe a yard of this and perhaps do some sort of sunset type uh, set up with my fabrics. That would be absolutely gorgeous. Let me set that aside real quick so I can move quickly on to when I'm talking about sunsets, how gorgeous these fabrics just unravel. They look gorgeous on the bolt, but it's not until you actually take them off the bolt that they just really shine. Absolutely gorgeous. No idea what I'm going to do with this. I just have to have some. And there was another one that I just kept on falling into this theme of it must be some sort of sunset. I, I don't even know. It's just absolutely another gorgeous fabric. I mean, look at that. And the colors, it's absolutely gorgeous. And it just constantly talks to me about something. I could make anything with this. Yes, I know you're thinking, what are you going to make with that? Um, again, don't know, just need a whole bunch of it. So those were the three that I was thinking that I just had to share with you, but on to what we're actually going to be looking at today. And that is this beautiful fabric that we picked up. We actually just, 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 sat down with Moda and ordered huge quantities of beautiful fabric. They just started coming in. They will be just scattered throughout nonstop all through until next summer and there on after. So what I was really excited about is this first one. I think it's going to be fun. This is actually what I'm going to use today for our project. And given what today is like, it's all about fashion. So I already cut one for us to take a look at, and yep, that's right. Today's fashion today says, what kind of mask are you going to wear? And this is a full panel. There are, and I went through and I was counting them, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. I believe there's close to 20 of them, I, I don't know, 18 to 20 different beautiful they're just adorable look at those masks I can't even tell you which one I want to wear first but on the side of the panel it actually gives you the directions on how to do this but in the follow-up on this full video I'll be running through it and I will step by step 
you through this panel to make a beautiful map. Hi and welcome back. I have sat down just this very some time. I've already cut out two of our really adorable little masks uh, so we can make one mask and do it quite quickly and it's going to be absolutely adorable. So what I've done is I've picked out two of, and they have to be of the same size. Inside the panel you're going to get the smaller ones which I believe would fit a child uh, great. Um, and these larger ones fit the adult frame of the face much, much better. But you need to pick out two. There is actually some items you need to be able to make a full mask. Um, you'll need the two, one for the front, and then another one for the back side of your mask. It doesn't really matter which one you call front and back because it is reversible. So you're really kind of getting two and one as you make them. I also like to be able to have them different, the front and the back, so that if you have to take off your mask during the day and put it back on, you know what side that you need to put up against your face again. So that works out really, really good. There's a second thing that I actually put inside of my mask as a safety, and that is a filter. What I'm going to use for the filter, it's actually a uh, fusible peel-on um, interfacing on here. Um, I'm going to end up ironing this onto one of these and um, we'll get to that in one moment. So the next thing I want to actually use here, I know a lot of my customers, uh, they, they're asking for the elastic and I totally understand. If you want to use the elastic, please go ahead and use the elastic. I'm going to use what I prefer and what this is, is actually strips of t-shirt. So you can find this anywhere and it's cheap to free. And um, I have a lot of people come in, they're asking me what is that, how do I make it, and what do I do? We all kind of love that cheap to free point. Not only is it cheap to free, it's actually probably the most comfortable piece of, of the mask that you're going to be able to use. And it washes and wears really, really, really nice. So. Um, I will explain how we make this on my next little piece here so that uh, we can move on forward. So let me put these down. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do some ironing and we'll be right back. Okay, now what we've done at this point, I've ironed on the back of one of uh, my face masks. I've ironed on my interfacing. And now I'm going to place together. Now keep in mind, these are directional. So to have my lips going in the correct direction, so I'm smiling, we don't want to be frowning by any means. That kind of looks a little odd anyhow. Um, but you might want to keep in mind too that the mustache needs to be up in the right position. So we're going to keep that in mind when we place these down. This is how we're going to do this. So we're going to take one of them and I'm going to place it right side up. After I get done placing it right side up, I'm going to take four links, and the length of these can be totally your choice. I would make them at least 12 inches. That 12 inches it needs to be long enough to be able to not only go around the head if you choose, but it also needs to tie and stay comfortable. So with these, and, and I will tell you how I actually made these. These are actually the, the very easy to be able to make. I take my t-shirt and I took a rotary cutter and I sliced a approximately about a one inch strip. When you take that one inch strip of t-shirt, and it can be any old t-shirt, does not need to be new, take the ends of the strips and pull them real tight. When you do, it automatically rolls them up into a nice cord, a nice stretchy, comfortable cord. You're not going to have to uh, sew it. You're not going to have to do any other mending with it. They wash and wear just like this. No unraveling, nothing uh, that's going to be a trouble for you. Take all four, and I want to see if I can get the camera to come a little closer here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to place one end on each corner. So I've, I've got four pieces here. 
that I'm going to do this with four corners for four pieces. And if you roll this into the center, it won't get tied up when you go to sew. You don't want to get those caught up into the stitches. So I'm just going to do this to all four of my corners. There we go. whole bunch of cords in four corners. Now this is actually face up for me, so um, I'm just going to make sure that my next piece, which I'm going to place face down, in other words, right sides together. So for all you sewers that are familiar with this terminology, this is called right sides together or face down. So the pretty part of the fabric is going face down. So when I do that, both of the fabrics are facing each other. If you do not lie it like this, your mask is going to be one side is going to be the wrong side of the fabric. So we want it to be pretty. So place it down so the edges match up. And pin your edges and cording into place. This is really the only pins that you need. You can place more pins in there if you choose. And like I said, if you choose to put more pins in, that's okay. Just remember what goes in must what? Come back out. So you just take your time and have patience with what you're sewing and it'll turn out real nice and pretty. I have a tendency to be a what they call a minimalist with my pins. And you can put in as many as you like as long as that's what's comfortable for you. And I found that with all my new sewers that sometimes more pins are better. So again, whatever is making it easier. So at this point you should have something that looks like this. Check it out. Make sure that you're not seeing any of the pretty fabric. If you're seeing any of the pretty fabric, take it apart, re-put it back together again so that you're, you're recognizing that you have both sides together. Now we're going to walk over to the sewing machine and we're going to put this all together. Hi, okay, so now I'm back over at my sewing machine. I'm going to be using the FOF Performance Icon. Any of your sewing machines will be working great for this project. Don't worry, the only thing you need to use is a straight stitch. So if your machine is working just fine on a good, nice, even straight stitch, you're going to be able to do the exact same thing that I'm going to do right now. Okay? So sit back, be comfortable, take your project you've already pinned, and we're going to go straight over to straight stitch. And I'll move aside here a little bit so that you can see what I'm working with. I would suggest that any opening, because we have to leave there an opening, any opening that you have, leave at the bottom of your mask. If you leave it at the bottom of your mask, you're not going to see any, well, maybe any closure, folding issues that you might have had. And you want the top of your mask to be nice and pretty because that's what people are looking at, right? Straight in your eyes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and it, it's a little helpful if you have a quarter inch foot. Um, if you don't, these make a great five inch, just your regular utility foot, makes a great five eighths of an inch. So I'm going to use the inside of my foot as a guide. We do have magnetic guides for all of you that might have a hard time keeping a straight line with your machine. That's okay too. I've had some take some uh, painter's tape and put it up against their plate and that also makes a great guide if uh, you can't use the foot. So I'm going to stitch around here. If you have automatic needle up and down on your machines, go ahead and make that happen because at the corners we're going to do some pivoting. If you do not have that, that's fine. Uh, just make sure that your needle is down when we get there. So I'm going to come down to the edge and stop before I get to the very end and I'm going to reverse over the top of that and then I'm going to come forward. Leave yourself a little bit of a space there. Notice that I stopped oh maybe about a quarter of an inch from the edge and the needle is down that way I can just turn and pivot and go to my next corner and I'm going to repeat this all the way around
getting those ties nice and secure. And come down to my left end here. Okay, so when I started, I did not start in the middle or at the very end. I actually started maybe a couple of inches from the first corner. That way, when I come to that same side, I'm actually going to stop about two inches in from the other side. That's going to leave an opening at the bottom, and you'll need that because we need to be able to turn our mask. So let's go ahead and get out of this, and I'm going to turn it right side out. And here's the corners in before I turn it right side out. That way I don't have to grab. Uh, a pencil and use the eraser side which is a really good way of pushing the corners in. I can just go ahead and push them in easily before I turn it right side out. So then you're going to turn it right side out here and this is a good time too to make sure you didn't accidentally sew in a piece of one of those straps. If you did you know that's perfectly okay that's the great thing about sewing there's never a mistake. You just kind of either meant to do that or change your mind. At this point, you better be changing your mind. So you go in there, turn it wrong side out again, and you take out the stitches, get that thing out of there, and then continue on stitching along. It's perfectly fine. It'll work great. Now, this is exactly what I want it to look like. I'm now going to take this, and I'm going to go to the ironing board, and I'm just going to kind of flatten that down a little bit. Okay. So now we're at the ironing stage. And what I, I, I want you to kind of take a look here. When you fold this in, it actually folds in kind of naturally already. I want you to just kind of press that in a little bit. Sometimes you just take your fingernail, that will kind of help get it started. So that when I take my iron then, and I'm going to go right straight across like that, just kind of give it a good, nice press. So I have a really nice press there, and that's going to press that edge down real nice and neat because you don't really want to see the other fabric on the other side. Try to make it as even as possible. If you don't, don't worry about it. That is going to be at the bottom of your mask and you know that's why we were saying leave the opening to be at the bottom. That way if you do kind of get it off a little bit, it's just okay. Not a problem. Okay, so this is where I really want you to take a little bit of attention with this. This is not anything difficult but it is something that if you pay a little bit of time with you'll you'll do, you'll do just fine you can be off a little bit don't worry about measuring and uh, being exact with it because this is your mask and it's gonna look great no matter which way that you do this we're gonna actually make three folds I'm gonna grab here you notice how I'm kind of holding it in this manner. That way when I pinch down I can just fold that down just a little bit like that. Just like that. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to pin-ish on the sides just like that. And then I'm going to do that again Yeah, that looks wonderful. I think I've done a few of these once or twice. Okay, and it's okay if it takes you a little while and you want to fuss with it. It's perfectly fine. I've myself taken them out before and said, no, that's just not what I'm looking to do. And sometimes it's just okay to say it is okay. Okay. So that wasn't so hard. And I'm just going to leave it just like that because I think that it looks fine. Once you get it down to here, I want you to take your iron and give it a really good press. Look at that. 
Wow, that's come out really great. I'm impressed. I always thought it's the best thing to make it look great, especially when you're on video. First time's a charm. So I'm just going to take those pins now and move them up to my mask. I am almost done with this. Can you believe that? It's going to take us no time to make the most adorable mask ever. Let me do this. I think everybody I know is going to want a mask now. They're going to want one just like this. Okay. So you should have a mask that starting off looks like this. Okay, and now I'm going to take this, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine, so follow me on over Top here. In with my needle, pink in my bobbin, which is going to match my pink at the bottom. And I'm going to stitch myself all the way around. So, starting at the bottom, I would probably, you know, if you want to do a quarter of inch, that's fine. I My preference, just because it's my preference, I do about an eighth of an inch at the corner. I just kind of eyeball it a little bit. Um, you can use a five eighths and such. Just give it a nice good. And the reason why I kind of put the same color thread is if I do make a little oops or if I get off not such a straight line, you're really not going to be able to see that little boo boo on there. So. Um, if I was feeling really, really confident with my straight lines, I just may use that white or off color and kind of get a little pizzazz. So again, I'm going to do pivoting. And let me remove those pins. You'll never, you never want to try to go over those pins. It's never a good idea. Even if you're accustomed to like, well, this machine goes over pins. Um, that is true, but if for some reason it actually does, your needle does hit that one of those pins, it's not going to be a, a very good thing for your project. So it's always a good habit to take those pins right out. So just going all the way around my mask. And always remember also that if you do something with your project that you are not happy with, it's okay. Again, just take out those stitches and redo it up again until you're happy with the end result. And this stitch actually stitched up the bottom part so that opening gets closed when you actually do all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and do a fixed stitch here. Well look at that. We made an absolutely adorable mask. On this side we're looking at the mustache and on the other side you're looking at the lips. So like I was saying before totally reversible. I can either be the mustache of the day or I can be lips for the day. Completely washable. Throw it in the dryer. Sometimes just to keep that nice crispy look I'll just lay it flat from the washing machine, let it dry flat and it comes out just kind of as crispy as it was right now. Beautiful, beautiful fabric and I'm pretty excited about that. One last thing before I let you go. Some of you are asking, well, what do I do with all these long things? If you keep them long, I have a tendency to wear my mask um, out everywhere all the time. So because I'm wearing it all the time behind my ears, just for me, it starts to get a little uncomfortable, um, the pulling and tugging and such. So I leave the long strands on there. If you want them to go behind your ear, some of them I do actually have them going behind the ear if you want it like that, place it up to your head and make ties behind both ears and then you can cut off the access because each person's head's a little bit different size so you want to make sure that it fits you comfortably because there's places and times where maybe you got to wear it at an extended length and you just you want to look adorable but you want to feel that way too and not be discom you know under discomfort. So for me though, I think I'm going to be a stash today. 
a total mustache day for me. And I'm going to go ahead and tie it up and wear my mustache. I'm pretty excited about this and I'm ready to hit the road, pure safety, and looking my stylish belt.